I am incredibly honored, honestly, to be part of this group and to have the ability to speak today with all of these people. And I'm incredibly grateful that every single one of the talks that's happened today has made mine <laughs> way better. So thank you so much. Um, and for all of us to sort of be present in this, because um, TED Talks are not necessarily about the speaker, but it's about this whole experience. And so because there's this audience, there's this really cool thing that happens. So thanks for being here, and thanks to the speakers. Today, I'm going to talk about something that, in my opinion, matters more than maybe anything else ever. And that is, that's an absolute statement, and, and I don't usually make those. I'm a little cautious to do it, honestly, but I kind of feel that way. And it's the idea of self-accountability. And that the skill set that comes with self-accountability is perhaps the most important skill set that we can have. And as leaders, it is the most important skill set that we can have. And we need leaders on every single level in our world today. We need leaders in business. We need leaders in schools. We need leaders in the grocery line. We need leaders on playgrounds. And self-accountability is the way to create the kind of leader that we need today. But I will say that it's a huge concept. So I throw that word around like it's light. And it's not light. Self-accountability has a lot of layers. And I'm going to really probably very effectively oversimplify this in the next 10 minutes or so. It's a really deep process that's very personal. So what is self-accountability? Simply put, self-accountability is taking action that's consistent with a desired outcome. So self-accountability is the thing that helps us be nothing. It's the thing that makes us something. It also is the thing that is our ticket to freedom. And as humans, what we want is to feel free. On, on a kind of a core level, on a deep level, what we want is to feel free. We want to understand our capacity. We want to understand what we can do on this planet. We want to know how to make an impact. We want to believe in ourselves and know ourselves. We want to be free. And self-accountability is the way to get to that freedom. So I make this sound sort of easy, right? It's not necessarily easy. So if what we want is freedom as humans, and we want to be free, how do we access that thing that I'm talking about, that self-accountability? How do we access that so that we can move into it? What kind of moment does it take for us to move into self-accountability? Well, for me, it happened to be kind of a life-changing experience. And early on in this experience for me, I had, it was a lonely and a, and a scary experience, but early on in it, I had a moment. I had my moment when I got to choose. And I knew that I could choose to be accountable and that I got to be in charge of my own destiny, that I got to create what was next. So this is me. Take it in, 1991. <laughs> nice, huh? I'm sure there's some of you in the room that had hair like this. This was a lot of work, actually, to get my hair like that. I tried to do it this morning, and I didn't have any Aquanet, so I couldn't do it. But um, So this is me. And in this picture, I was 17 years old. And at this time, I really kind of had the world in the palm of my hands, right? I was the life of every party, and I'm not kidding, every single party. <laughs> I was fun. I had a lot of friends. People wanted to be around me. I was a cheerleader. I was so-called popular. I uh, was an accomplished athlete, so I had track scholarships to go run um, to several colleges. So at this time, you know, I kind of had it all together, or at least that's what it looked like. Underneath that facade of I have it all together, I was actually really lost. I was lost. I had no idea who I was. But in my gut and in my soul, 
I knew that I was on this planet to make an, a footprint. I knew I was here to do something important, and I was so determined to make an impact. I was so determined to figure out who I was that I created a ton of really challenging situations for myself. So at Thanksgiving time, this same year, I found out I was pregnant. And that changed everything for me. So I want you to picture this. I'm at high school. Um, it's three weeks since I found out I was pregnant. And I was kind of in this emotional, really unfamiliar fog. Because every single thing I thought about myself had been stripped away. I didn't know who I was, so I wasn't the cheerleader any longer. That's a, that's a whole other TED talk. I wasn't the athlete anymore. I couldn't run. I wasn't the life of every party any longer. I had no idea who I was. It was a really emotional time for me. I had decided, moment one, when, when I, when I um, found out that I was having a baby, I decided to have that baby. So I knew that's what I was doing. But I still had a lot of emotion. So picture this, so I'm at school, I'm going from one class to another, I'm kind of in this unimaginable fog, I had on my acid wash jeans that I made myself, thank you very much, and a white hooded sweatshirt. And during this time, I really worked to keep my optimism. So I worked to keep my bounce in my day. So on this day, I'm going from one class to another, down these wide stairs, lots of kids all around me, and I'm kind of bouncing down the stairs, the way that I bounced. And something stopped me in my tracks. And in this moment, I looked at everyone around me. I was watching people. I was feeling the energy. And I felt this incredible sense of judgment. It was so hard for me. And then what happened is I realized that I was watching myself. I was observing myself. I was looking at myself. I saw all these people around, but I was looking at myself. And what I realized is that the judgment I thought I was feeling from all these people was not about those people. That the judgment I was feeling was my own. I was judging myself. And in that moment, I had the most beautiful feeling of gratitude, openness, and forgiveness that I've ever had. And what I did is I sat down on those stairs, all those people around me, and I cried. And the emotion was not because I was grieving a life that I wasn't going to have any longer. And it wasn't because I was afraid of moving into something like raising a baby as a teenager. The emotion was because I understood that this was my moment that I understood that right then and there, I got to choose how I wanted the rest of my life to look. And I got to choose if I wanted to keep being, being a victim in this. Because up to this point, I was kind of being a victim. I was looking outside of myself for the solutions. I was waiting for someone else to save me. And I realized no one else was going to save me. I got to do this. And that was a moment for me that I remember like it was minutes ago, and it was 25 years ago. Because that's the moment that I found my freedom. I found my freedom to create. So what does this have to do at all with leadership or creating solutions or innovation? Well, it has everything to do with it. Because until we acknowledge that we are in charge of our own change, we absolutely cannot impact any other change. And until we acknowledge that we can, we can mobilize our own change, we can't mobilize other change. And when we own the fact that we're responsible for our personal strategy in life, then we can create strategy for business, we can create strategy for families, we can create strategy for teams, but not until then. And that's because self-accountability increases our capacity. We understand what we can handle, 
and we trust ourselves. So the person who knows themselves on this level generally can handle ambiguity a lot better, so they handle the unknowns a lot better. They also can deal with conflict and anxiety much more effectively and can mobilize and impact change. And when we don't acknowledge our autonomy and our unique ability as humans to impact our own world, things like aggression, frustration, poverty, intolerance, lack of empathy, lack of motivation, those are the kinds of things that happen when we don't acknowledge our autonomy. So, is this easy? No, and I promised you I was going to oversimplify this, and I have, <laughs> very effectively. It's not easy. The road to self-accountability can be lonely and painful and scary. And usually, it's because we are afraid. So we are afraid to take risk. We kind of heard through, through a lot of the talks today about risk. You know, what does it take to put yourself out there with a new idea? It takes risk. And we're not usually willing to take a risk if we don't trust ourselves. We're not usually willing to take a risk if we don't understand our capacity and that really anything is possible. And that's because we're afraid we're going to fail, right? We're also afraid that um, we're going to get blamed for something. So someone's going to point a finger at us when something didn't go right. And a lot of times, this is the crazy thing, a lot of times we're afraid that we're going to succeed. We're terrified that this whole damn thing might work. And it is the most powerful thing that we can do. We have opportunities every single day to move toward accountability. Some of them are small and some of them are big, but they all have one thing in common, and it's the first step, and that is telling ourselves the truth. It is first acknowledging our current reality. So we need to be willing to stop. And sometimes you'll be able to do it for yourself. That's the goal. And sometimes you'll have something really super scary happen. And something will stop you in the middle of the stairs in high school. And stop. And you've got to look at yourself in the mirror and you've got to acknowledge the truth of where you are. And that you're there because of you. And only you, ultimately. And the only way you're going to get somewhere else is ultimately because of you. And from this place, we can begin to trust ourselves. From this place, we build capacity. And it's from this moment, it's right there, that's where you take action. It's from that place where you know you can really do anything because you hold yourself accountable. So here's the thing. Self-accountability is raw, and it's actually not the most popular thing to talk about. I'll tell you that when I talk about this a lot, and when I talk about it, I, I can, people are like, I don't really want to say this is not the sexiest thing on the planet to talk about. I know that. It's not. It's very personal, and it's individual. And you know what? It's messy, and it's not perfect. And yet, it's the thing that we need to do to create, right? And so you can have big, huge moments like I did, but you don't have to. You know, you don't have to have those big kind of earth-shifting kinds of things like having a baby at 17 to notice when you can move into accountability. I've had lots of tiny moments. I have them every day. I've had them about lots of them today. Some of them I miss and some of them I, I move into. But we have lots of tiny moments in our day when we can move into accountability. What we need to do is create enough mental space for ourselves so that we can catch that opportunity, so that we can even know when we need to stop and look in the mirror, because we miss those. So there is no playbook for accountability. I wish that there was. I wish that when you came in and you got your little TEDx notepad, that there also was the playbook for self-accountability. But there's not. It's imperfect and it's hard, and it's messy. And you know what? You're not there 100% of the time. The goal is to be there more often, 
And the goal is to catch yourself when you're not, so you can maybe choose if you want to move in. So I am going to ask you just to do a couple of things. I'm going to ask you to be present. Right now. Because when we're present and we're in the moment, that's when we catch the times when we can look in the mirror. That's the golden ticket. So I'm going to ask you to be present. And I'm also going to ask you then to stop and be willing to look at yourself. And you know what? That can be really scary because sometimes it's not pretty. I get it. But have the courage to do that. Because from this place of presence and truth, this is where we can really trust that we are as big as we think we are. And that we can do things that we might think are not possible. And we all have it in us because every single one of us is a leader. And right now on our planet, we all need to be leaders. So take the time to stop because I'm guessing that you're going to have one of those moments where you go, oh, I get it. And it's just never too late. And the impact is huge. That's what I have. Thank you.